Hello, my name is Kelly Antone, PLC Training Instructor with PCC. In this lesson, I'm going to cover Global Data Blocks Part 2. So in the project tree, I'm going to open up the optimized data block that was created in the previous lesson. I'm going to go online and start monitoring the data block. So I can monitor values, so you can see those values in the monitoring column. I'm going to use a split screen view so that I can open up the online and diagnostics of the PLC so I can put the PLC or transition from stop to run, etc. So I'm going to adjust the size of the split screen view. Now, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to enter in a value in the temperature. So I'm going to modify the operand. So I'm going to enter in a value of 70 and press OK. So that value is now the running value that is being used inside the PLC. If I go to my online and diagnostics and I stop the PLC, so it is no longer running, now you can see the start value is zero. If I put the PLC in run mode, the start value of zero will overwrite the monitor value because it was not flagged as a retentive value. So now I'm going to modify the operand again and put in a value. This time I'm going to put in 80 for the value and press OK. So there's a command up on the toolbar that will allow me to copy all of the monitor values if I'd like. So I'm going to create a snapshot of the actual values of the PLC. So now in the snapshot column you can see there's also a value of 80. There's a command that says copy snapshot values to start values. The start values in the offline program will be updated with the snapshot values. So you can see that the offline and online program are now different. So if I want to make the online program the same as the offline, I would have to download the updated changes into the PLC. Now I will be able to use the new start values when I transition the PLC from, from run to stop and back into run. So what I'm going to do is change the monitor value that's currently being used inside the PLC to a, val a value of 90. Select OK. Now I will select the online diagnostics in the split screen view. I will put my PLC in stop mode. And now when I transition the PLC back into run mode, the start value of 80 will become the new monitor value. So it'll overwrite the 90. So now the new start value is being used as the running value inside the PLC program. So I'm going to close the split screen view. So now I'm going to go offline with the data block and I'm going to insert a value inside the data block. So I'm going to insert a new row. So I'm going to insert a row after speed and I'm going to call this one new var1 and it's going to be of the data type integer. So I've changed the structure of the data block at this point in time. So now if I want to download this into the PLC, we're going to have to pay attention to the prompts as far as what's going to happen. Because of the structural change, the data block is going to have to be reinitialized. So in order to download, I'm going to have to say reinitialize, and then you, I will select load. Now this will update you know, the values inside the PLC. Now if I don't want to have to reinitialize the data block, I can do something what is called activate the memory reserve or keep actual values. So I'll say OK. Now I'm going to insert another new variable. This time it's going to be after new var 1. So I'm going to call this one new var 2. And it's going to be of data type integer. And because of the activate memory reserve, when I go to download these changes into the PLC, I will not be prompted to reinitialize the data block. So it's just going to apply the changes you know, to the data block inside the controller. This concludes the lesson on Global Data Blocks Part 2.